Animations are a great way to make your web app come alive and feel more interesting to visit. And a common place where we see animations is when scrolling down a website, where elements get animated as we scroll down our page. And one of the easiest ways to implement this is using View Users Motion Library, which uses Pop Motion to give us easy animation directives and composables. So this is a quick look at what we're going to be building, and let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is inside of our View 3 app, install at View Use slash Motion. Then we could add support for V Motion globally by going to our main.js, importing motion plugin, and saying app.use motion plugin. And now we're ready to go ahead and start using it. So there are a few different ways we can create animations. We can use one of vMotion's powerful presets, we can write custom animations with directives, or we can use a composable and declare our animations in our script. So first, let's start off with some of the presets. Inside app.view, let's clear out our script and template. And inside of our template, let's just create a div with a class of target and some text. Then as a quick example, let's go to our styles. Let's add a width, height, margin, center our divs content, and a background color to our target class just to give it some styles. And since we're using some of View Use Motion's presets, we can head over to the documentation and see a ton of different options. And the one that I'm going to use is a VMotion slide visible once right, which will slide our element in from the right the first time that becomes visible in the viewport. If we run our app and look at our browser, as soon as our page loads, we'll see that we're getting that slide transition because it's already visible. And if we go ahead and copy and paste this component so that we have another instance of it, as we scroll down, we'll see that our second component will only animate once we reach it in the viewport. And for a lot of use cases, these presets give you more than enough to add that transition effect into your app. But if these presets don't offer exactly what we wanted, we have two different options. And the first one is declaring our animation directly inside of our template. So let's create another div with a class of target and add the directive vMotion onto it. Once we put this on an element, the vMotion allows us to write our animations as props on this element. And the supported props are initial, which is the initial state of our component, enter, which is the entered state, visible, which uses the intersection observer API to detect every time our component becomes visible, visible once, which only runs the first time it becomes visible, hovered, focused, and tapped. So these are the different style states that our component can have. So ours, we want to use initial and visible once. So we'll bind these to an object that contain style properties and transform properties. So let's say we want our opacity to be zero and our Y value to be hundred. Then the first time it becomes visible, so visible once, we want to set our opacity to one and our Y to zero. So it will fade in and move up. Now, if we reload our app, we still have our first two elements and our third one will slide in from the bottom and also fade in at the same time. Another way that we can use this library is by using a composable called useMotion. So we can import that in our script and let's also import ref from view. We'll say const target L equals ref. And then inside of our template, let's create another div with a class of target with a ref of target L. And this is going to be the element that we're going to transition using our use motion composable. Finally, inside a script setup, we can say use motion and pass it two arguments. The first one is our template ref, so target L. And the second one is a JavaScript object, which has similar properties to the props that we just passed. We can set initial and visible once, and the values of these are the same that they would be in the directive. Now, if we refresh our page, as we scroll down, we can see all of our elements smoothly animating in, and we're actually using three different ways to achieve this. I'm curious to know which one's your favorite. Obviously, the presets are super powerful, but it's also nice that it's easy to customize so we can get exactly the look and feel that we're after. But I just wanted to share this library with you because I found it while I was working on some changes to the LearnView website. But as always, I hope this video helped. And if you found it interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe for more view content. I'll see you in the next one.